This video is brought to you by Broccoli. Stick around till the end for a special offer. Hi there, it's me again, a person you probably don't know. What I'm here to talk to you about today is digital minimalism. And I know there already are a lot of videos on that on YouTube. But I think they all fail to take into account one important issue, and that is data conscientiousness. So what I would like to tell you today is that caring about your privacy and having digital minimalism are not opposed. They can go hand in hand. And I would like to show you the tools I use to achieve that. Listening to data security advocates, it's easy to get the impression that in order to do something serious about your data, you have to be some sort of hacker person. And listening to them, you probably have some sort of mental representation like this, um, that uh, there are a lot of tools which are beloved by millions, which are very easy to use, but unsecure. And those tools that are secure and take your data seriously are just very hard to use. And I am now advocating for some sort of shitty middle ground, but this impression is plain false. There are tools which respect your privacy and let you use them very easily, which are also beautifully designed. And I'm here to show you that. So what do I look for in the services I use? There are three main criteria that make an app or service my gold standard. Firstly, it needs to be open source so that everyone can check the source code. This disincentivizes any backdoors and allows for healthy collaboration. Contrary to popular belief, a company can still make money with an open source app. It just means that different companies can focus on their app's strength instead of redoing all the groundwork. Secondly, all my personal information, such as notes, files and messages, need to be end-to-end -end encrypted, meaning that not even the company can know what I write or do. My personal stuff should stay private. I might make another video debunking the I have nothing to hide argument. Lastly, the app or service needs to have good design, meaning both being easy to use in an intuitive way and not making my eyes want to leave my skull when looking at it. A lot of apps fulfilling the first two things are ugly or can be used only by experts. These are not for me. I want an app that respects my privacy, I can trust to do that, and that's well designed. So let me show you how I implement this gold standard in my day-to-day -day life. I have four devices. My laptop, my desktop, my tablet, and my phone. Since I'd like to hop from device to device while working, all the tools I represent today are tools which are synchronized. The device most important to me is my laptop. I use it for everything. Coding, university, staring at my email inbox for hours, feeling unproductive. I bought it two years ago from Huawei and I have been satisfied with the device itself. But I think what's way more important for this video particularly is what it's running. It's running Soren OS, a Linux distribution that's free and, in my opinion, the most easy to use and beautiful distro out there. So let me show you what's on my computer. This is my desktop. It's empty, of course. I treat my desktop like a to-do list. I only have things on it I need to do. My desktop is synced with all my devices using Mega, my end-to-end -end encrypted cloud storage of choice. Mega also uploads all the pictures I take with my phone. The icons up there are my recording software, Mega, and Signal, my messenger and an app that definitely deserves its own video. Right now, it's indicating I have some new messages, but my laptop is on do not disturb mode, so I didn't get a notification. There are my notifications, my calendar, and weather, also the do not disturb toggle. And here I have my most important folders. In my cloud folder, which is uh, synced with Mega, I have a folder for keeping some important uh, things, a folder for recent stuff, my archive, and a shared folder with my family. Whenever I want to open or start an app, I just press the super button, which is formerly known as the Windows button, and um, start typing, and then I hit enter. 
Bitwarden is my password manager of choice. It's multi-device, free, open source, and securely encrypted, so it meets my gold standard. I use standard notes for note-taking, no pun intended. It uh, also meets set standard, uh, but I use a paid version for extra features. It's really great and has a lot of editors uh, to choose from. Uh, this also warrants its own video. For my tasks, I use Todoist. That's suboptimal, but I have yet to find an app that meets my gold standard. I won't get too much into my tablet, as I only use it for media consumption, or my desktop computer, which is structured in the exact same way as my laptop. A few words on my phone, though. It's from Xiaomi and still running MIUI, something I'll have to change. Links for the launcher, wallpaper and the icon pack are in the description. I deactivated all notifications except my messenger signal to not be disturbed. My gold standard apps are also on my phone, including Mega, Bitwarden, Todoist and Standard Notes. I have a second page on my home screen for a calendar preview, my VPN and my lights, as well as apps that I don't want to be able to reach with one touch. I like to use my phone only as a tool, so I locked YouTube and other entertainment. For media consumption, I only use my tablet. I hope you find some of the tips and insights into my digital minimalism helpful. If you did, or have any questions, please let me know in the comments. You know what else is helpful? Our sponsor, Broccoli. Broccoli is a high quality and delicious vegetable that helps extend your life. With the bioactive substance sulforaphane, broccoli helps you prevent everything from arthritis to various forms of cancer. Even better, unlike other cruciferous vegetables, broccoli doesn't lead to a lot of bloat. Try broccoli now and get up to two weeks of increased liver function for free. Link in the description. Broccoli. Your health, we thought. Thanks again to Broccoli for making this video possible. And of course, to you for watching. See ya!